You create a web API the same way you create other Appian design objects. You can create one from a template, or you can create one from scratch. If you create a web API from a template, the HTTP method will be automatically selected and the expression will be pre-populated. Let's use the hello world template. This template uses a get method to allow external systems to retrieve the message, hello world. To create the web API, you need to add a name, description, and endpoint. The endpoint is the unique location for this Hello World API and should be descriptive to make it easy for other developers to understand what the endpoint is for. In this example, I'm going to use Training Hello World. I'll set the security according to best practices. A user cannot call a web API unless they have at least viewer permissions. Now you can see the Hello World web API. The expression is on the left and the test inputs and test results on the right. This is the layout for all web APIs. In the expression, the Hello World web API uses the abang HTTP response function to define what happens when an external system calls this endpoint. It has parameters for status code, headers, and body. This web API uses a simple get method. When an external system hits the endpoint for this API, it will send the 200 success code and retrieve the message in the body parameter. Let's look at the test pane on the right. Web APIs are a lot like expression rules except for two key differences. First, they have an endpoint that we added when we created this web API. And second, you cannot configure rule inputs. Instead, you pass values to a web API using query parameters, headers, a body, or a combination of the three. This follows the HTTP protocol all systems use for web APIs. Before we talk about the test inputs, let's click Test Request to see what happens when an external system sends the web API a GET request. In the test results section, you can see the 200 status code was returned along with the hello world message in the body. You can also test the web API by hitting the endpoint with your browser. There's that same hello world message in the body of the web page. Remember, we just talked about test inputs. You can test the parameters you add to the web API using the test inputs. Let's update the hello world expression to include a query parameter and then update the test inputs to test the request. This update will include several if statements. First, I want to check if the query parameter is null. If the external system does not send a query parameter, I still want the web API to return hello world. I can create a query parameter using httbang request.queryParameters and then adding the name of the query parameter. In this example, I'll use the name message. So if the message parameter is null, then the API should return hello world. Else, if the message parameter is two, the API should return hello hello world. Let's test the API as is. It should still return hello world, even though there is no query parameter message. Now let's test the query parameter you need to add it to the test input section. The name is message, and let's test a value of two. The test result body contains hello, hello world. If we try anything other than two, the result is hello world, just like we wrote in the web API. In this lesson, we created a web API using the hello world template. That template uses a git method to return the message hello world when an external system sends a git request to the endpoint we created. We also looked at testing a web API and updating the body of the HTTP response to use query parameters. Remember that we access the request query parameters by using HTTP bang request dot query parameters and then the name of the parameter. Web APIs can be customized to respond to requests as needed for each use case.